Here's first of five trips now, we finished with the adults 1835. Hey everybody, we're at the Hunter Jumper Show at the South Point Casino, and this is Scotchmas Day 4. <laughs> I forgot who did the intro. Oh, it's you! <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're already losing it. It's, day, it's only day four. <laughs> yeah, that was Dale doing the intro. <laughs> well, you did a fine job, Dale. Thank you so well done. much. I did that a couple weeks ago, actually. Yeah, actually, it was right before Thanksgiving that we were down at the South Point for the Hunter Jumper Show. Yeah, South Point is an amazing property. It absolutely is, and you're our little vignette today. You're going to see a whole bunch of South Point. But first, we have business to attend to. We do. It is time to open up day number... Day number four, four. and that is down in the corner. Let's, it's my turn. Right, let's have it do it like this yeah. so everybody can see. Oh, I love when you pre-perforate for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one's also upside down. And it is, oh, our favorite, it's the Glengoyne oh. Single Malt. That's the distillery we toured in Scotland. We love Glengoyne. Don't we have a bottle of that that's very oh, it's expensive? Long gone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 10-year-old single malt. That's a Speyside single malt. We love Glengoyne. But for you, we're going to look up some tasting notes and some history about Glengoyne. And we'll be talking about that in a moment. But before we do that, we are heading back to the South Point, and we're going to show you a little bit of the Hunter, hunter Jumpers, and then Paul is going to give you a little taste of what the NFR is all about. NFR Day 1 at the South Point. Watch. Our Day 4 bonus footage takes us here to the South Point, a property on the South Strip that is definitely on our list for a staycation. There is a whole lot going on in this massive resort. Once inside, we have to pay our respects to the founding father, Benny Binion, responsible for bringing the National Finals Rodeo to town. This photo is from the very first NFR in 1959, held in Dallas, Texas. The fabulous South Point Arena is our destination for today. This facility opened in 2006 and is one of the finest in the country, hosting prestigious rodeo and equestrian events year-round. The exhibit hall is 80,000 square feet and the arena has permanent seating for 4,600. We're here today for the U.S. Hunter Jumper Association Las Vegas National Championship. Let's take a quick look at some jumper action. Overlooking the arena is the Cinch Saloon. Not only can you stop in for a brew, but it's also a great spot to watch the action from above. For this event, they've set up a patio just outside the saloon as well. During events, vendors set up shop on the exhibition floor and offer their products for sale. But that's not all. Through this door is the Prefert Pavilion, with two more full-size arenas and direct access to the outdoors. The Hunter Jumper Championship has a number of age classes for competition and in here are the junior riders. It's an amazing facility and so much capacity. Okay, fast forward a week and a half and we're back at the South Point. It's NFR Day 1 and if you're not at the Thomas & Mack, you need to be here for all the rodeo action. Just inside the doors, the PRCA Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association have their official merch for sale. This is also where we scored that new 2021 patch. Mm -hmm. 
The South Point is all in for the rodeo. This huge daily draw sheet is right in the hotel lobby. There's a free shuttle, giveaways, the famous bucking horse and bull sale, and of course, live entertainment. Upstairs on the arena level, we caught the team setting up for the big Cinch Western gift show. Over by our friend Benny Binion in the Christmas tree is a great spot for a fun pick. Here you can get a close-up look at that gorgeous championship saddle provided by Cactus Saddlery out of Texas, as well as the championship buckle from the Montana Silversmiths. The NFR viewing party goes on every night in the South Point ballrooms, two of them. In this larger one, fans watch on huge HD screens while a live announcer calls the action. Across the hall is another viewing room, also packed. And just outside the room is a hot food station. One more thing about the South Point, you do not have to go up to the ballrooms to watch the rodeo. You can watch the rodeo right at the bar in the casino, and lots of cowboys are doing that. It's really an amazing property, and we, we know that the, that the, the rodeo is actually at Thomas & Mack. All the stuff that's uh, happening happens down there, like the uh, Cowboy Christmas happens at the convention center. But a lot of the cowboys and a lot of the folks that come to visit stay at the South Point because it is so cowboy-friendly. And... It's sold out all during the rodeo. There is so much going on there that you literally never have to leave it. <laughs> right, yeah. It's a very exciting time for, for Las Vegas. Uh, this, is, this is one time of the year where Las Vegas really uh, makes a lot of money. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. and we are so glad to have them back after losing them last year. We will be doing more rodeo coverage throughout Scotchman. You'll be seeing that again. Here's a little history. When I, when I first came here, there was no rodeo at the time when I first came here back in 78. But what happened on the Strip for like the, the uh, probably a week or two weeks before Christmas, everything shut down. There, there was very few shows, very few people were in town, if you can believe that or not. But that gave the opportunity for some schleps like me to go and do some entertaining in some bigger rooms because, you know, there were people and they were opening them up for that. So it was a good time to see all kinds of different entertainers. If you lived here, it was a fun time too because it was totally different. And many of you are mentioning in the comments we're reading that you're kind of amazed at how much hoopla Las Vegas is making about Christmas and the holidays. That is not, that has not been the case for most of its history. No. A lot of the time, it, they just ignored Christmas. Yeah, when I, first, when I first came here, you never saw you a, Christmas a Christmas tree. tree. No, nothing, yeah. no, nothing. <laughs> but now it is a holiday destination, and that's a great thing. All right. Let's, Glenn uh, what do we got about this? You talk, I'll pour. Yeah, the Glen Goyne Distillery is actually not Speyside. I said that wrong. It is just north of Glasgow, and I should know that because we were just there a couple of years ago. It is actually in the shadow of... Loch Lomond. It's actually uh, kind of in the middle of Scotland. Um, the Glen Goyne, 10 year old, actually last year in 2020 received two gold awards from the International Spirits Challenge and the Scotch Whiskey Masters. So this is a very fine award winning single malt. It is 40% uh, alcohol, so it's 80 proof. And uh, we will talk about the tasting notes in a moment, but basically slowest distilled single malt in Scotland. They distill slower than anyone. The barley is dried by air, yeah. and then it is aged. We saw that, in, yeah. We did, yeah. in oak uh, sherry cask. So we'll talk about tasting notes after we have our dram. I already know we're gonna like this. I already know we are yeah, too, because so, we've had glue yep. going before. Solange, everybody. These little glasses are lovely for the nose, too, aren't they? They're yeah. as nice as our... That is just, that is really... That is super, is duper so smooth. It is so <laughs> it good. It is so good. It needs nothing. 
Although they tell you on their website, if you put a drop of water in it, you actually bring out some different flavors. We should do that on the, a couple of these. We, Maybe we even will. put an ice cube into it, just to let it breathe a little bit. Mm. It's good. It is super smooth. So, tasting notes. Fresh green apples, grass, and a little bit of nuttiness. In other words, super duper fresh. Um, toffee. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure I get the toffee. I'm not sure I do either. Yeah. Uh, Glen Goyne is absolutely one of our favorites, and it's it's widely available here in the United States. Yeah, and um, honestly, if you've never uh, had scotch before, this is a good one to start out with. It's a good choice with. because yeah. it's actually very mild flavor, very light golden color, as you can tell. It's very pale compared to what we tasted yesterday. Yeah. Um, and we can't recommend this enough. We love Glen Glen. All right, let us know what you think, right? Yes, definitely. We love, I was catching up on comments today, and we love that you're giving us your impressions of what you've already tasted on days one and two. Keep them coming. All right, Scotchmas, day four. Done. Done.